Hello everyone, I'm Janice Searles Jones and I'm the CEO of Ocean Conservancy. It is truly an honor to share this message with you on World Consumer Rights Day and I am so grateful you chose tackling plastic pollution as this year's theme. It could not come at a better time. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, this year has been a difficult and painful one for many the world over. This tragic health crisis has exposed many rifts and inequalities. We know, for example, that here in the United States, health outcomes related to COVID-19 vary greatly by demographic and access to treatment can be hard to come by in historically disadvantaged communities. That's unacceptable and we have a lot of work to do. The pandemic has also exposed a stark need to rethink our relationship to plastics and the way we manage and dispose of plastic waste. Already volunteers with Ocean Conservancy's International Coastal Cleanup collect millions of food and takeout related items from beaches and waterways worldwide every year, most of them plastic. In 2019, volunteers collected nearly 5 million food wrappers, 2 million plastic beverage bottles, 1 million plastic straws and stirrers, and nearly 700,000 plastic takeout containers. That's all in a single day's effort, and that was before the pandemic. We know that the use of plastics for food delivery and takeout, as well as packaging from online commerce, has skyrocketed since lockdowns began more than a year ago. Researchers estimate that some 200 billion items of personal protective equipment, or PPE, like gloves and masks, are used each month. That's 200 billion with a B each month. And we know that these items are making their way into the environment. Volunteers have already removed tens of thousands of PPE items from beaches and waterways worldwide, according to data collected through our mobile app, CleanSwell. And Ocean Conservancy will release a report later this month on PPE pollution, showing that that's likely a vast underestimate of what's out there. These numbers are a stark reminder that globally, our recycling and waste collection systems are not enough to tackle the sheer magnitude of plastic that companies are putting on the market. In a matter of decades, plastics have infiltrated every facet of our lives. Wherever you are in the world right now, you are probably within arm's reach of plastic. There are certainly some benefits to different types of plastic. They keep us and our medicine and food safe during this pandemic, for example but the vast majority of plastics are fleetingly used and then discarded. Plastics are pervasive because they are cheap. They're largely manufactured out of fossil fuels. They're versatile, they can be sturdy or flimsy, thick or thin, colorful or clear, and they're durable. Unlike paper, wood, and many other materials, they don't break down in the environment. But plastic products, like all products, have a shelf life and eventually need somewhere to go. Unfortunately, scientists estimate that estimate that no more than 9% of all plastic ever produced has been recycled. An even smaller percentage has been recycled more than once. In fact, in the United States, plastics are the least recycled of all materials. So where does all of this plastic go? In one word, everywhere. Recent research suggests that some 11 million metric tons of plastics flow into our ocean every single year. That's more than a garbage truck's worth of plastic by weight every minute. Plastics have been found everywhere from the deepest ocean trenches to the most remote Arctic ice sheets. They're in the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. It can feel overwhelming and frankly frustrating. Few products have touched and changed consumers' lives the way that plastics have, and yet no responsible consumer ever asked for or could have expected these outcomes. Since the 70s, Plastics have been labeled with recycling symbols that mislead consumers into thinking that products are recyclable when in fact they aren't. For decades, consumers in many places around the world have been diligently putting plastics into colorful bins, thinking the items were being recycled when in fact they were being burned in incinerators or shipped overseas to places unable to handle the influx of waste. But the veil has fallen from our eyes and consumers and consumer advocates like you are uniquely positioned to demand change. We can all start as individuals, of course, by making sustainable choices every day when we shop. We can opt for products that are made of alternatives to plastic. We can choose reusable instead of single-use products. We can choose products that are made of recycled material and that can be truly recycled. Collectively, there is power in consumer choices like these. 
In 2014, Ocean Conservancy launched our Skip the Straw campaign. The pledge encouraged ocean lovers everywhere to simply say no thank you to plastic straws when you're going out to eat. A year later, the world witnessed a marine biologist remove a plastic straw from the nostril of a sea turtle, and the Skip the Straw movement caught on like wildfire. Today, small businesses and local and state governments around the United States have taken measures to ban or limit single-use plastic straws, and even stronger measures are in place elsewhere in the world because the public demands it. In fact, pressure from both consumer advocacy and environmental groups has forced governments and companies alike to take action in recent years to combat the ocean plastics crisis. But these efforts are not enough. Even with current global commitments, scientists estimate that a cargo ship's worth of plastics by weight will enter our lakes, rivers, and ocean every day by 2030. Our communities, our planet, and our ocean deserve better. We need to reduce our reliance on plastics, particularly items that are difficult or impossible to recycle and that often end up on our beaches and waterways. We need companies that do produce plastic products and packaging to design items using recycled content, to design items to be recyclable, and to help lay the groundwork for effective waste collection and recycling systems, starting with more honest, transparent labeling. Indeed, I want to congratulate Consumers International for their efforts to implement common sense labeling practices and drawing attention to this issue in their excellent report from last year. And we need government leaders to take bold action and hold companies accountable. Legislators around the world are beginning to do just that. I'm heartened by the movement we're seeing here in the United States with bills like the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act, which Ocean Conservancy has endorsed, and state level legislation in California, Oregon, and elsewhere. When it comes to ocean plastic pollution, the numbers are staggering, but consumers and advocates have immense power in this fight, and you are not alone. We thank you for taking it on and commit to working alongside you for a clean, healthy ocean and planet this World Consumer Rights Day and every day. Thank you.